three, two, one, go! Don't you love it when your rocket does this? But hate it when it does that? And love it again when it does this. Hi, I'm George and this week we're going to have a look at the shock cord release mechanism. Now this is designed to release a parachute cord after a set amount of time. So let's say after 10 minutes, uh, the parachute will be released. So if the rocket's stuck in a tree or power lines, uh, you can at least try and get your rocket back, uh, even though you might not get the parachute back. So let's have a look how it's made and how it works. The mechanism consists of a 3D printed housing that holds a small 3.7 gram servo motor. A small sheet metal backing plate keeps the servo in place and provides the load bearing structure to the mechanism. There is a small steel pin fitted to one of the ends that holds a sheet metal lever. Now this lever holds the parachute shock cord and is locked in place by the servo horn. And finally on top is a 3D printed lid that gets screwed down with a couple of small screws. This is the mechanism in the locked position and when we open the servo, the lever can swing out like this. This end of the mechanism is attached to the rocket and this end connects to the parachute. We then connect the servo to one of our timers for testing but it could equally be anything else that can control RC servos. This could also be driven by second output for on the parachute deployment mechanism. The mechanism can be mounted like this on the rocket. It sits in a little recess between the bottles to reduce drag on the way up but when the parachute deploys, it gets pulled free and can move around in line with the shock cord. One thing that probably should be added though is a swivel on the parachute side so that the wires to the servo motor don't get twisted up. We put the mechanism on our test stand to see how much of a load it could handle. The servo was unpowered, so it was just a friction of the tiny servo gearbox that was preventing it from opening. The mechanism was able to hold 8 kilos or 18 pounds before it released. For our next test, we took it to the New South Wales Rocket Trees launch site at Whalen Reserve. We have a camera mounted on the bottom looking up at the mechanism, then the mechanism itself, and finally the parachute on top. For this test flight, the servo is turned off as we're only really testing to see if the mechanism can hold onto the shock cord when the parachute inflates. We also wanted to see what the movement's like while the rocket falls under parachute and if it causes it to release as well. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Here is a view looking up at the mechanism. We have a slack safety line here attached between the rocket and the parachute, just in case the mechanism releases or fails. As it turns out, the mechanism held up well without issues. But what do you do if you didn't have the mechanism on the rocket, but your rocket still gets stuck in a tree? You can attach the mechanism to a drone, and then connect a line with a weight to it. Here we're using a nylon line for this to make it easier to see, but it could be any other kind of line, uh, like fishing line for example. This way you can fly a drone over the branch that the rocket's on and then drop the line over the branch. You can then pull up a stronger rope and then pull the whole branch down to get your rocket back. On this day it was pretty gusty and so it was a little more tricky to drop the line accurately. Next time I think the weight needs to be closer to the release mechanism to stop it swinging so much. And then this is what happens when your kids get a hold of the mechanism.
Well, you can see there's plenty of applications for it. Now, it's very unlikely we're going to use this on every single flight. But if the wind is blowing in the wrong direction or we're launching close to trees, then we'd probably use it. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.